Hello Year 7 and welcome to your second lesson in Still Life. Today we're going to be drawing the jam jar that is attached to your class charts and I recommend you have that open on a separate tab so you can see both the video and the image as you draw. You are going to need a ruler, a pencil and a rubber and an A5 piece of paper. So this is just printer paper that I folded in half and I'm only going to be using half of it. So I'm going to ignore this half and much like last week I'm just going to be drawing on the worn half. So to help yourself you could even fold it in half again. So you've now got quite a small piece of paper. You can don't need to use plain paper if you don't have access to it. You can also use lined paper, squared paper, you could use the back of a cereal box, the brown side or you could even use some Amazon packaging so I've just got some packaging here you could use something like this to draw on as well as long as you can see what you're going to be able to draw and you're happy to stick it in when we come back to school that's all you need so we're going to get started so you're going to have the image open my image is in front of me on my laptop I am going to start by drawing a line down the middle of my page just a light line using my pencil and my ruler again if you don't have a ruler you can use like the straight edge of your planner or any kind of book because we're not measuring we're just drawing a line and this is going to help us with our symmetry so if you remember from last lesson there's a bit of a focus on symmetry and I'm going to cough <coughs> and so the idea that if you're drawing still life and you're drawing something like a bottle or a jar there is an element of that each side will mirror each other. This isn't good. the shape in the in today's case. The shape will mirror mirror each other, but our shading and our detail won't. So, what I'm going to recommend is make sure my edges are quite sharp. So my page isn't going to kind of crumple on me. So what I'm going to recommend is that you sketch out the top of your of the uh, jam jar first. Just do a light sketchy line. I might need to press a bit darker so you can see it, but you need to keep your lines light and sketchy. And I'm going to do that relatively wide. Because if you look at the image, the top of your image is only, is about, so the top of the lid is just about the width of your jam jar. Just slightly shy. But, so I'm going to just sketch that line in so I know where the top is. And then I'm going to sketch near the bottom where I think it's going to end as well. Just draw myself a quick line. Like about a centimetre from the bottom of my page so I know the scale in which everything's going to go and I know that everything needs to be equidistant from the centre line so it needs to be the same distance from here to here so you can check that with your ruler or you could just play it by eye so what I'm going to do I'm just going to draw this in basic, basic shapes first so I'm going to make this quite wide and then I'm going to go and just draw a rectangle like so and then I'm going to draw another rectangle just below it keeping my lines light and sketchy this is just the basic shapes at the moment I'm going to add my detail in, in a minute I'm going to draw another rectangle so that she's fit thinner again so I'm reducing the thinness or the thickness even of my rectangles and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a diagonal line out from here and on the same same on the other side so whatever I'm doing on this side I'll do on this side and make sure it reaches it's the same comes out to the same place as this line do this I'm going to measure it again just yeah and then I'm going to draw you can use your ruler for this actually, making sure this diagonal line finishes at the same place here this one does. 
and I'm going to draw a straight line down and do the same on the other side. Draw a straight line down. So at the moment I've just got the basic shapes or and then we can add our details and we can add our curves as we go because it isn't the right shape at the moment. There's curves at the bottom that need to be added. This needs to curve out. There's bits over here. There are curves up here that need to be added. But by doing this basic shape, we can check our proportion. We can check where everything needs to go and we can build up from there. So actually what I'm gonna do now is before I add in those curves, and the slightly more details. I'm just going to add the label. So I'm just going to use, I'm going to look at my image and I'm just going to, just looking at it, I'm going to just draw a line at the top, thinking where, all right, I think it's about this distance from the lid. And if I go down, it's probably maybe around here from the bottom of the jar. So I know the distance the label's got to fill from here to here. And then I'm just gonna look at the side of my jar and it's quite close, it's probably half a centimeter from each side. So I'm gonna sketch those lines in. And what I can do from there is you can attempt to find maybe a a uh, glass that has the maybe the right circumference a lid of a tin or a jar this one is not the right size but if you can find some anything like that i'm gonna try something i've got i've got some badges that i need to sew onto my work bag see if those would fit I'm not quite I'm trying to see if there's anything else in my facility uh i've got my drink that work that's a bit too big but if you can find something that you think would be the right shape so you might have a smaller glass than I do um, you might even have a protractor that you could use so if you can you can find something to trace around to draw the circle or what you can do is just going to do loads of little flicky lines you're going to move your wrist and you're going to create a circle. So light sketchy lines, move your wrist. You can also move your paper. It's not going to be a perfect circle to begin with. You're going to have to make adjustments because mine's looking very orange shape at the moment. But you can make adjustments as you go. So it's not, I know mine's not quite the right shape. So I'm going to go round again. And again, I'm going to use the, my rubber in a minute as well, just to help me with my shape. I can check as well, if I look at my image, I actually know that it comes quite far out, the top of my circle does. So I'm going to use my rubber just to take away some of the lines I've done and don't need anymore. Need to check. Just it's not going to be a perfect circle. It's not a perfect circle on the drawing that we're looking at anyway. I'm just going to try our best to get it as close as we can. And don't forget to try and get it to mirror. What my issue might be is that it might just be a bit too tall. So I'm just going to bring it down a little bit to see if that makes much of a difference. So I'm constantly looking at my image and adjusting as and when I need to. I'm using my rubber and because I've done light sketchy lines it means that I don't have a massive indent and that when I shade later I'm not going to have kind of marks in my work. It's going to be quite easy to go over and add the detail. So I'm happier with that shape as it is at the moment. My lines are a bit too thick because I need to sharpen my pencil, which I will do now. But once that's, once you're happy with that, 
you can move on. Right, my pencil is sharp again. And now I'm going to start adding in the curves and the more specific details that I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to make sure that my image doesn't go blank on me. And I'm going to, so I've got this straight line, reach these two straight lines, and on this side, I'm going to sketch out this line from the centre line. And then I'm going to start curving up after about two centimetres. I'm going to curve up until it reaches the straight line. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. So sketch out for about two centimetres and then curve it up. Now we've got this curve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rub out these lines here. Like so. now I've got this curve which is looking good and I'm going to curve the top as well so where it reaches the third little uh, rectangle I'm going to follow the line down and then I'm going to curve it curve it just to, to extend it beyond this line slightly and then just curve it back to meet the straight line again so you're going to follow, I'll do it on the other side again, you're going to follow the um, diagonal line and you get, when you reach this line you're going to extend it out and curve it slightly and then bring it back to meet. What you can do is then rub those lines out. Don't forget that you can replay any section on this video. So if I'm moving too fast you can replay you can repeat it again and again. So there we go. You've gone, you've traced down this diagonal line and you've curved it out. And the same on the other side because it's mirroring it because it's symmetrical. So what you can see from here is if you look at your image, this line here isn't necessarily straight. And it's only really shown in the shading. But what you can do is just to help you later on is make this more curved, make it more of an ellipse shape. So I'm going to rub out my straighter line because I don't need it. Keep that line as an ellipse. The same for this line at the top as well. This isn't a straight line, it's also slightly curved. So I'm going to curve it bring it out and then curve it back in and also the ends, ends of this rectangle in my image they're not straight they're also angled so I'm just going to angle those as well just from the edge of my paper or the edge of that line I'm just going to angle it in okay, there we go got slightly angled lines now if you can notice at the top of our jar is still square, it's still rectangle even, and we need to add some more curves into it. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this line up, and then I've already started when I was explaining earlier. I've started to add this curve. So I'm going to go up, and just before I meet the top, I'm going to curve a line in. So I'm doing this kind of shape here. So I'm going to do that one here and then I'm going to go over to the other side and I'm going to do exactly the same but in the opposite direction. So add that curve. Then I'm going to take away that corner that I no longer need. And then what I'm going to do is then just draw very lightly sketch a, light, a line just to draw matching these two curves. That's going to help us with some shading later. So you've added your curves, you've added your circle. It's going to go over some of my lines again. And then you've got the basic shape. Actually, what I have no. So I've talked you through how to draw the outline of your jam jar. 
now you're going to add your tone. So I'm not going to talk you through adding your tone all the way. So I'm actually going to speed up this section a bit so you can rewatch it as many times as you want. There are some elements that I will probably pause and talk you through. So we're going to be using um, we're using our pencils to add our tone and we're also going to be doing something similar to when we did our, our Edward Weston drawings and we're using our rubbers to pick out some elements to make our highlights so if you pick you can rewatch this as many times as you want the key things you need to remember are keep your pencil sharp always keep your pencil sharp always start with your darkest areas first and you can and I will walk you through or talk you through any particularly difficult areas we're going to ignore the label for the time being we're going to do that in another lesson so all you need to do today is add your shade that's the last thing you need to do